so it's been a while since I made a video. I've gotten quite a few comments on my YouTube channel and Facebook and Instagram and so forth asking what I've been up to. First of all, I just want to thank everybody for their nice comments and for checking in on me, but not much has really changed. I mean, I've put on the requisite Corona fat poundage, but otherwise everything is about the same. You know, there is that small detail where I relocated my entire life and shop a thousand miles away and I spent the last ten months trying to prepare the shop to make swords again. No big deal, right? Alright, so just a quick external shot here. As you can see, we have three distinct bays. The shop is 26, 2700 square feet or so. so. Let's go start in that far bay over there. Over here in the corner, I've got my air compressor plumbed in. I've actually got it going through the whole shop. It goes through the next two bays, and there's a hose reel on each bay. There's one right there, and then on the ceiling of the other bays you'll see later on. Is that a hornet there? The, okay. Yep, leave me alone. Thank you. Alright, so this bay is basically unheated and uninsulated, so it's just a storage bay. As you can see, I've got lots of crap stored in here. This is all yard sale junk. And over here is some more, and I just got, you know, ladders and stuff for moving and equipment around, pallets, there's a pallet jack right there. I've just got lots of scrap wood, you know, plywood, drywall, everything. This is the seldom used stuff bay, so it can just live out here. I built all these shelves over here. I've got 24 feet of shelves, and as you can see, it's basically full already. Over in this corner is mostly automotive stuff, jacks and ramps and jack stands and all my automotive tools and parts, but pretty much everything else is all PHM related. These are all my materials and tools that are somewhat randomly or seldomly used. If we come over here, you can see this little shallow shelf that I built is all of my kind of spare and scrap materials. Uh, it's a lot of handle and handguard type materials. I've got longer stuff just kind of sitting on the floor. These plywood boxes are basically just pure scrap. It's literally just kind of junk stuff, but you never know when you need a piece for, you know, sacrificial purposes or for shimming something or whatever. This whole section is sheet metal and over here is plate. This is largely sword blade material, especially the kind of orange tinted, tinted stuff. That hefty chunk right there is actually a secret sword to be made in the future. Leave me a comment if you think you know what sword that might be. Very thick and very short. Alright, swiveling back this way again. We got the yard sale stuff, and then obviously my baby. This is where she gets parked. Doesn't look too bad for 21 years old or so. Yeah, anyway, pretty simple stuff. Let's move on to that middle bay. That's essentially the machine shop. Okay, now I apologize for any sort of echo. These bays have tall ceilings, and it's just a lot of steel and plywood, so what are you gonna do? So over in this corner is basically my lathe and related tooling and work holding and all that stuff in here. And if we spin around, this is more or less my milling machine and the associated tools and a kind of a workbench with commonly used stuff on it. Now if we walk on the other side of this bay, we pretty much have things that don't make a lot of fumes or dust. I want this room to be somewhat clean for all of the precision machining equipment. So, you know, I got like a big horizontal bandsaw, I've got a vertical bandsaw, my drill press, hydraulic press, and just a little work area with some bandsaw accessories. If I swing you back around this way, there's not much over here, but in this corner, basically right behind the other milling machine, I'd like to get a much larger milling machine to kind of fill the space where the shelves are, and that's what this workbench will be for. Oh, and if you're wondering what this unmentioned door was in the machine shop, I'll show you real quick. This is actually my gym. So, over here on the left, this is just a lot of kind of cardio equipment and machines and so forth. You can get a sink, which is really nice. And I'll kind of swivel back the other way. And this is all my lifting equipment. You know, barbell and squat rack and all my plates and everything. Even got my entertainment center over here. I got my laptop and it's 
tied into the speakers up on the wall. There's two subwoofers in the corners back there behind those plate trees. It uh, definitely rocks in here, I'll tell you that much. And yes, Rick is gonna give it to you. Let's swing over here and go through the sliding door. That's here for no apparent reason. And uh, let's check out the welding and grinding bay. All right, so coming right through here, lots of tool chests with lots of various random tools in them. I kind of get some decorations that need to go up on the walls. Uh, I've got some, these are actually Mjolnir strike faces. These are the end caps of the hammers. This is 4140 chromoly and it can be heat treated. So they can actually be used. I've got Raider sword parts. I have machined a bunch of these. I've made a bunch of these swords. So I actually have some spare parts. Uh, hand guards and pommels and so forth. Now, if we swing over this way, this whole corner is basically my grinding and sanding and polishing part of the shop. Now, I'll just make a quick, quick note here. In my old shop, if you remember, it was just a two-car garage. It held two to three cars, plus all my tools, so my whole system was, you know, everything had to be on wheels and everything had a spot on a shelf, so I would just take a tool out, use it, put it back, rinse and repeat a thousand times a day. So with the space in this shop, I can actually set up dedicated workstations like this. So we have a die filer. This is really handy for some very specific operations. This is just a tiny little cheap grinder. The only thing I use this for is to sharpen the tungsten on my TIG torch. I've got, uh, you know, a polishing wheel, basically. I've never even used this because I never had a space to put it. Over here, this is a rubber table. I got a carbide burr in it. All this is really used for is for putting a perfect 90 degree angle on anything. And, you know, you can do sort of really tight inside corners and things you wouldn't be able to get to with other tools, more or less. Over here, we get my dinky, weak little sander. This is, I forget, it's the 4x36. Uh, I've got a bigger sander here. This is a 2x72. This is somewhat of a beast. There's no belt in it right now, but I think you get the idea. It rides on these rollers right here. These are all my accessories. I've got different contact wheels, big and small, all kinds of different, different things. This is a modular setup with replaceable arms. This whole arm can be replaced, and you can put all kinds of different attachments on this end. So this is kind of like a universal type machine very useful and then next to that is hopefully going to be my beast of a sander this is a six inch by 80 inch sander again the belt is not on it it's actually that big belt right up there and those are the little two by 72 belts for that thing i'm just working on the motor on this uh, i think it was wired incorrectly so hopefully I'll, hopefully i have it up and running somewhat soon all right so if we back up here this is a little room i made it's essentially a clean room. It's basically just to keep anything sensitive out of all the grinding dust and the welding spatter and all that stuff. Things like paperwork and drawings and schematics and all that. It's stuff that I don't want to catch on fire lives in there. On the outside, I've just got some organization. Got my drill station, I got all my hammers, I got screwdrivers, shot towels. These are all air tools, many different kinds of air tools. And these are just uh, you know, the bits for them, basically. Let's go look in here real quick. So there's not actually much to see in here. It's actually kind of hard to do because it's such a small room. But basically, as you can see, I've just got you know, scrap wood, workbenches all the way around. I do keep my oxygen and acetylene tanks in here because really don't need sparks near these things. This will definitely kill you. I've got cabinets everywhere. I've got all my camera gear up here and these are all empty for the, mo for the moment, but it's just all storage and again, clean stuff. I got my laptop just for looking things up if I need to or ordering things, whatever. Just uh, everything in one place. Okay, now the other side of the room from the sanding and grinding station is my cutting station. So I've got an abrasive cutoff saw for, that can do long materials. These arms can pull out to support something that's really long. I've got uh, something for smaller materials. I've got my porter band. This is really useful. It's got a foot switch down there somewhere. Yep, right there. And uh, you can just 
you know, cut small thing with it. And it's actually a thumb screw right on the underside of this part. And this whole thing actually lifts out. And you can take the bandsaw to something like a large object that you don't want to bring over here. This is my metal cutting miter saw. It's compound as well. It's pretty handy. It's not the most high-end saw, but for certain things it's really nice. Right next to it is this plate shear. This thing can cut quarter inch plate. Pretty handy for, again, specific operations. Even under the workbench, I don't know if you can see in here, it's pretty dark, but you know, I've got circular saws and jigsaws and sawzalls and all the blades and everything for all these tools are all mounted to the sides of this table. So basically this is one stop shop. If you need to cut something, you just come over here. You don't have to pull out a tool and then go find the right blade and you know go find a place to plug it in and so forth. Everything's mounted to the table. It's good to go. Also just random stuff up there, mostly just tape and just kind of things that I don't have enough of to you know, organize into a single bin or something like that. Just to the right of that is my welding kind of station. So this is all my welding safety. I've got all kinds of welding clamps. My TIG welder, MIG welder. That's my plasma cutter. You know, all my TIG rods. This little thing in the corner is mildly interesting. This is one of the first things I ever made when I learned how to weld. It's actually a ring roller and it can roll things into a perfect ring. And the very first thing I ever made was this ring, which is actually pretty round except for that part, but not bad for my very first try ever. All right, if we, if we back away from the welders over here, we have my welding table. You've seen this thing a million times. I pretty much just use it for any kind of fabrication at all. I've got my angle grinders under here and on the other side, there's all kinds of welding clamps. There's more welding clamps on the other side. Just kind of an all-in-one general fabrication table. Oh, and I know this is a shop tour, but I'm actually working on some small projects just to kind of get back into the swing of things. Most people probably haven't seen this. I never did a video on this. This is something I made a long time ago. It's basically hundreds of pieces of sheet metal, and they're all just kind of tacked together everywhere, needless to say. My original goal was to do, you know, full welds and then grind it all back so that it would be, you know, one continuous piece. But I kind of like this, you know, this jigsaw puzzle look to it. It just gives it an interesting texture and look. Now it is fully accurate. It's even the underside of it. And there's quite a bit of detail. This thing took me well over 100 hours to make. And I use it for storing chalk. This is for the gym, the chalk makes your hands grippier, so you can hold heavier weights, but that's the only purpose of this thing. So what I'm actually making is a stand for it. Previously at my old house, this was around one of the support beams in the basement, and instead of cutting this off and devising a new mounting system, I'm just gonna make this kind of freestanding stand for it. I'm just gonna weld that piece on there, I'm gonna clean it all up, you know, sand this all down, paint it and so forth, but it's just a good little mini project to get me back into things. Now we back off a bit here. This corner is basically all just storage. This is gonna be the stuff that I use the most often. And as you can see, quite a bit of empty space on those shelves. The idea being, you know, the storage bay, the first bay that you saw, if I find myself retrieving things from that bay frequently, I'll just permanently put them out here. So it's just going to be a trial and error thing to decide what's going to live out here versus what's going to live in that storage bay. Well, that's about it for now. Pretty basic stuff. I'm just kind of making assumptions on the way I want things to work around here. I'm sure there's going to be a lot of adaptation, but this is where I'm starting. As of right now, I'm literally starting my next sword next week, so in the coming months you'll see a new video, hopefully. If you want to see some interim updates in the meantime, follow my Instagram or Facebook. That's about it for now. Till next time.